Hey guys, Jason here. I, I want to show you a real quick, cheap, easy way that you can help with the humidity in your guitars um, for a poor man's way of doing it, I guess. I'm doing a real quick home video in my very messy garage, so shh, nobody tell my wife that I did this video because she would shoot me for showing you my messy garage. Um, in fact, we'll just tell her that I cleaned it up before I did this, right? So here's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, I bought a few of these. These are really cheap um, plastic soap dispensers. They just open and close. Um, they're 94 cents a piece. And then I got some uh, sponges. These sponges, they actually come together like this. I just cut, you see how I just cut it with a pair of scissors to, to fit um, in this. So they fit, I, I imagine I could probably get, let's see, one, two, I could probably get three of these out of one sponge, and I think they come two of these big sponges in a pack, I believe. There might be three, I'll double check. Um, but so that's what, six sponges at least out of one, and this was like maybe a buck and a half maybe. So for each one of these, you're less than, uh, you're less than what, a buck ten for each one of these, a buck ten, a buck twenty-five maybe. So that's really cheap. So here, here's going to be the secret of what you're going to, going to want to do. Take these and on the very, very back of it, uh, we're going to want to drill some holes. So if you've got a drill, that's all you're going to want to do. So let's do that. All right, you're going to notice that I changed colors on you. Not me, but the container that we're using. Um, so I learned a lesson uh, whenever I decided, hey, we'll cut away and show you what we're doing with it. I'll show you the tools that we're using. It's really pretty simple. You're going to use a drill and a bit. So um, I'll show you what happened. We're, we, I switched to a purple container that I got because, well, actually, I left the other one inside. Um, when you're trying to do one-handed videos and you don't have the benefit of having a photographer with you and you're doing this at your house, then you tend to crack things because you're trying to do things one-handed. It doesn't work out too well. Um, so here's basically what we're going to do with these. You're going to take your drill and drill holes. Uh, you can see I'm not the excellent marksman with doing this, especially when I'm trying to rush through this. The object's not to get them perfect. I've done some before that I've got holes that are just nicely done to where you can actually sell these or make them look nice. Um, but the idea is that you just put some holes in it. Put a lot of them in there. Um, you can see about the size hole that I did. Another important thing to do is if you've got any plastic residue that's on the outside, because sometimes whenever you drill, it'll leave uh, like plastic raisings on them. Uh, make sure that you take some, uh, yeah, I usually take like a putty knife and I'll scrape off the plastic on the outside of it and then sand it down nice. Same thing on the inside too as well. That way in case it goes up against your headstock um, inside the case or anywhere else, it doesn't abrase anything. You don't want something shaving off uh, or little pilings of this of the plastic falling off later on too inside there and it gets jostled around inside of your case and the last thing that you want is to have you know that that nice 1940s 1950s um, uh, Martin or Gibson that you somehow managed to get your hands on you make one of these and you get it in there and that little bitty piece of plastic shard comes off and gets inside of your case and uh, through moving it around goes and scratches up the finish just a little bit. So that's one thing that you want to do with these. So after that, we're going to just take, and now I will switch the camera around here. And in a fairly simple concept, you take and what you'll do is you'll wet down your sponge, get it to where it's just barely um, damp. You'll squeeze out any excess water to where you can't drip any water off of it. You don't want it dried out, but you want it wet and then just squeeze it out, drip any of the water out to where the, none of the driplets get on it. Put it down in there, close it up, boom. You've got a nice little humidifier that you can stick in the headstock. I'll usually stick those in the headstock. I remember I will recommend um, the Kaiser lifeguards to put in the sound hole. So you put those in the sound hole, put this in the headstock, and you should be set. So that's it for less than maybe a buck ten, a buck fifteen, somewhere in there, uh, a piece. You've got a real cheap way to save your guitar and uh, be a poor man's way for putting some humidity back in your guitar. That is super important uh, during these during cold months. Now, here here's the thing. Let me explain to you why this is so important. Um, some people don't get why do we humidify the guitars. So, funny thing, out in our garage, that's where our heater, our central air and heating uh, exists for our for our house. 
So what happens is in the cold months, we run our heaters and because heaters in, in, in places, if they pull out all the humidity in the air, it just like sucks it all out. So you notice furniture that you've got, your furniture, it completely just devoids of any humidity and you'll see cracks and things like that fester up within your furniture. Thin woods on guitars, they hate um, not having humidity. So that's why you'll have things happen like all of a sudden if you noticed on your fretboard, uh, you'll have your, your frets will all of a sudden be jagged on the edge if you run your, your hand all the way up your fretboard, especially around the 12th fret and so, you'll feel frets sticking out. It's because things have just kind of pulled in. It's like sucked everything in. Uh, the wood starts bowing and things like that. It's really bad. You'll see cracks that happen um, and that's not something that you want to have happen on your guitar. So this is why doing something like this is important. I know some of you say, well, I don't have money to invest in doing this. No. So two things. Number one, if you got money to invest in your guitar, you want to keep that thing as long as you can. So there's no reason why you can't say, I don't have money to invest on doing something with proper humidity. You can't afford to have cracks in your guitar. So this, my friends, less than a buck ten. This is a real good way for you to no longer say, I can't afford to do anything for humidity control on my guitar. Make sure to keep it damp. Uh, make sure if you go in there and you find that your sponge is now dry uh, to go back there re-wet the process and you're good to go i've had these things in my guitars for years uh, and just keep re-wetting them and you're good uh, last thing that i'll say is to make sure that you're getting a, a hydrometer uh, that you can check the humidity levels in your guitar in your cases especially um, my preferred um, and i'll say with full disclosure i'm a diodario artist so um, they don't pay me for endorsements um, but I will fully disclose that I am a Diodario on Planet Waves artist, but I do highly recommend uh, the Humiditrack that they have. The Humiditrack system will send Bluetooth to your phone, to your iPad, things like that. I can check all of my cases at once to tell you the temperature inside the cases, the humidity level inside the cases, and hey, for those of you that are interested, there's a video that's down below too as well that you can link to that you can see what it's like to set that up, but here's the really cool thing about it. If you travel with those guitars, and TSA and the people that handle the stuff at your airline say, hey, I never dropped your guitar case. You can actually see when your guitar case has been dropped. It's a pretty cool feature. So hope this has been beneficial to you. Uh, give it a like if it has. We'd appreciate that. And also give us a subscribe too. Love you guys. Have a great and blessed day.